Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael. May God, Baruch Hu, may God protect our brave soldiers, and may God return all the hostages from Gaza immediately. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Yerachmiel Daniel ben Gedalia, Edward ben Ephraim, and Shlomo ben Edward, whose birthday is on the 28th of Av. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing for their families. This week's Torah portion is Parsha Sra'e, Vision and Decision. Our Parsha continues Moshe's final address to the Jewish people. He emphasizes that their actions will determine whether they receive the blessings or the opposite, heaven forbid. Whether they follow God's commands and they will be blessed, and defying these laws will bring God's anger upon them, heaven forbid. Moshe instructs the nation to proclaim these blessings and these curses on Har Grizim, on Mount Grizim, and Har Evel, on Mount Evel, as they enter the land of Israel. He also commands them to destroy all idols, reinforcing the spiritual purity required as they settle into the Promised Land, into the land of Israel. Moshe reiterates the importance of following God's path, reminding the nation that their inheritance of the land is due to God's covenant with Abraham, with Yitzchak, and with Yaakov, not due to their own righteousness. He reviews many laws and commandments, including the laws of Meiser Sheni, which is tithing, the laws of Shemitah, the laws of what are considered a kosher bird, fish, and mammal, and various other kosher laws. And finally, Moshe Rabbeinu highlights the significance of the three major chagim, the three major festivals, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. However, a question comes to mind. The parsha begins with Moshe Rabbeinu's powerful statement, Behold, I place before you today the blessings and the curses. The term behold doesn't fully capture the meaning of the Hebrew word re'e. It refers to an active, physical observation, seeing with your own eyes. Yet Moshe Rabbeinu is discussing the blessings, the curses that he previously mentioned and will be proclaimed on Har Grizim and Har Evel on the mountains of Grizim and Evel. And so why does Moshe choose to use the term Re, which means see, rather than Shema, which means listen, as Shema Yisrael, hear, O Israel? And this seems much more fitting for the context of our Pasuk, of our verse, to hear the blessings and curses that he is describing. The Rabbeinu Bachayar of Bachya bin Usher, a famous Spanish commentary, gives an interesting explanation. He quotes a verse from Kohelis, Libi ra'a har vadas. My heart has seen great wisdom and knowledge. Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, reflects on how his years of leadership have granted him immense wisdom and immense understanding. Similarly, Moshe Rabbeinu states in, in Parshas Ve'eschanan, Re'ei lamadati eschem chukim u'mishpatim si, I have taught you the laws, the rules, the regulations. The Rabbeinu Bachai explains that the term Re'ei does indeed mean si, but in this context, it's referring to seeing with one's mind, understanding on a deeper and more profound level. And this kind of seeing is not merely a physical sight, but a profound comprehension. The true depth of knowledge Moshe Rabbeinu is calling involves recognizing the significance of the choices set before the Jewish people. Will they be wise enough to choose God, to choose the blessings, to choose life? However, the Arachai Makadesh, Rav Chaim Ben Attar, a Moroccan commentary and Kabbalist, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that in our context, Re'e truly signifies seeing with our very eyes. Moshe Rabbeinu opens up the Parsha by drawing a definitive line in the sand. On one side are God and His commandments, leading to blessings, leading to success, and on the other side lies the exact opposite, heaven forbid. The Yorachai Makadesh explains that choosing one side over the other will lead to results, will lead to tangible consequences, heaven forbid. The people will not merely hear about the outcome of their actions, they will see it. They will understand it. They will directly experience the reality of the side they chose. The choices made will ripple throughout generations, shaping the spiritual and physical landscape of their descendants. Moshe Rabbeinu is emphasizing the weight of their decision and will have lasting impact far beyond the present. 
affecting all their future generations. With the use of the word re'e, Moshe Rabbeinu highlights that the nation will witness the outcome of their choices firsthand. The results won't be distant or theoretical. They will be visible and tangible in their daily lives, showing them the direct impact of choosing to follow God's commands, or the opposite, heaven forbid, and the consequences of neglecting God's commands. The Yerach HaMakadosh's profound lesson is ever more relevant in a world where a single decision can truly change everything. A specific choice can have massive effects altering the narrative of a society on a global scale. Moshe Rabbeinu's words ring true till today. The choices we make now will impact our lives more profoundly than ever before. In today's society, the challenge is to maintain perspective, recognize your true potential, and work to make your dreams a reality. Instead of being blindsided by the allure of immediate gratification, it is crucial to focus on long-term and make choices that will shape our world for the better. In our daily lives, we must understand that every action we take, spiritual or physical, carries real significance. Our future is not predetermined. It is shaped by the choices we make here and now. We are not bound by fate or predictions. We hold power to shape our own destiny. Through our decisions, through our determination and willpower, we can lead ourselves towards a life of meaning, success, purpose, with the ultimate redemption. There is a profound quote by Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory. I believe that Moshe was right when he taught us the great choice is between the blessings and the curse, between following the voice of God or the seductive call of instinct and desire. Freedom is sustained only when a nation becomes a moral community, and any moral community achieves greatness far beyond its numbers. As we lift others, they lift us. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.